walked all the way back here to see, uh, well, to find my cattle and to take them up front to give them grain. But they're just looking at me and they're just standing here. So I'm just going to leave them alone and let them uh, chew on the grass. I got a few trees back here that they'll uh, rub their heads on and their necks on. I got a handful of trees back here. And uh, a cool little thing about these trees is that if you got a tree and you uh, cut all the branches off to about uh, to about six, seven foot high up on the tree, if you just cut all the lower branches off on the tree, the cattle will uh, rub their necks on it. They, they absolutely love these trees. I mean, if you just get a tree and you cut some branches off of it, they will uh, sit there and they will just uh, rub themselves on these trees. They absolutely love it. And so uh, they're back here uh, rubbing themselves on these trees. And last night I got about an inch of rain. I got about an inch of rain last night, uh, maybe an inch and a half. Oh, it was about an inch of rain. The ground is still not uh, exactly uh, wet, but it's been it's been dampened. The ground is still hard. Like when I walk when I walk across my field, my feet is not my feet are not sinking into the soil, and so I know that the soil profile is not very wet. But I got another chance of it raining next week, and so uh, uh, around March, April, May, June. March, April, May, June, we usually get about three to four inches of rain a month. And so if it rains like this every week for the rest of the month, that would be considered about average rainfall. And this morning it was raining when I woke up. And so I took an opportunity to just look through my financials and see how my money is doing, right? I took a, I took a look at my financials this morning when I woke up. And, uh, you know, I came to a realization that uh oh well actually i just realized uh you know i was like oh man this is going i'm i'm, I'm gonna make something like uh twenty five thousand dollars this month and i and i when i was sitting there this morning i guess it was just uh i just uh, you know uh had not woken up yet and i was like oh this might be the most money that i've ever made in a month but it's not it's not the most money that i've made in a month uh you know uh, uh when i was selling my last lot of cattle there was actually one month where I made about forty thousand dollars, and so uh, you know, but still, but still, twenty five thousand dollars is very good. You know, it, I always say that success is it, it, it's not like a uh, it's it, it, like being successful. Just it's being successful, right? It's not like oh, uh, if I don't hit this number, I'm not successful, right? Um, if I make twenty five thousand dollars in one month, that's a very good thing. Uh, this morning I was sitting around and I was like, oh my, this this may be the most money that I've ever made in a month, but it's not going to be the most money that I've ever made in one month. I have had well, uh, two months, uh, two months prior to this where I've actually made about $40,000 a month. And it was when I was selling my cattle. I was selling cattle every week. And, uh, yep, uh, but this month I'll be making about $25,000, twenty to $25,000. And, uh, and I know that this may sound, but when I look at the numbers, right, and, I, and I've always said I'm not going to go out of my way to help somebody for a hundred grand, right? A hundred grand is a trivial sum of money. Why would I go out of my way to help somebody for a hundred grand if I can just stand here in my backyard, do work on my own business, and make twenty five, forty thousand dollars a month, right? Honestly, why would I? And I've I've always said that my uh, my reasoning for this ideology is that. Is it really in the world's best interest for me to stop running cattle to go and hold somebody's hand? Because at the end of the day, if I stand here and I work on my own farm and I run cattle and I produce beef, I'm producing like 50,000 pounds of beef a year. That is very important, right? It is very important for me to produce that 50,000 pounds of beef. And it's like, I'm not going to go out of my way to help somebody for two to three months of pay. And so that's what I mean by, you know, a hundred grand is a trivial sum of money. And I wouldn't leave my farm. It would not be in anybody's best interest for me to leave my farm for even a hundred grand. Right? It would not be in anybody's best, you know, whose best interest would that be in? Because if I stand here and just work on my own business, I produce like 50,000 pounds of beef a year, right? And that's very important. It is very important. You know, I've always said... If nobody stands up, you know, steps up and does something, nothing's going to get done, right? 
It's not a good idea to sit around and just hope that everyone's going to do everything and that I don't have to do anything and I'm just going to pitch a free ride, right? I'm just going to catch a free ride on the gravy train. That's not a good idea. It's very important to step up and accomplish things. And so this morning I was looking at my financials and this month, oh, I'll probably end up doing something about 20, 25,000. I got my income tax money coming in. I got a lot of cattle that are ready to go to market here in about two to four weeks. Oh, I'm doing very well for myself this weekend. Uh, you know, I'm starting to get some rain in the, uh, and the, uh, the weather's cooling. And so uh, my grass is going to start growing ballistically, right? These animals are, are grazing the grass 24-7. And look at, how, look at how much grass I still have, right? And the weather's about to start getting good. I'm about to start having a lot of grass. I mean, this grass is about to start bolting as well. And then I also have the grass in my front yard. And so, you know, uh, I just got to stay after it. I'm doing very well for myself this month. I'll maybe make about 25000 next month. I'll probably, uh, over the next uh, about three to four months, I'll probably end up doing about twenty to $25,000 a month. That's about how much money I'll make. And uh, I'm just going to keep after it. I'm just going to stay steady with it. And as uh, soon as I get my taxes filed, I'm going to take my paperwork to the bank. I'm going to show it to the banker. And they're going to tell me what I can do, right? They're going to give me the information. The, the, uh, they're they're going to give me the fine details. And then I'm going to figure out what I can do from there. Yeah, but these are all the cattle. I was out in the front and I was looking for my animals and I couldn't even see them. And so, you know, I, it's not like uh, my, my, uh, my, my field is not jam-packed full of cattle, not even close. I'm not anywhere near capacity, right? I genuinely have enough grass on this field to feed like a hundred animals. And so uh, right now I'm doing very well for myself. Uh, when I look at my financials, uh, you know, uh, my, if my grass is going up in a vertical line, my bank account is going up in a vertical line, right? That's what I say. And as of right now, that is holding very true. I have, uh, I'm about to have an excessive amount of capital. I'm about to have a lot of money, a lot of money. Oh, uh, uh, you know, uh, and the thing about being successful, like someone can look at me and they can say, oh man, $25,000 a month, that's nothing. Oh man, what, you know, what is $25,000 a month? Oh, that's nothing. But you know, that's not how I see it. If I believe myself to be successful, then I'm successful, right? If, if you know, $25,000 a month is, is almost, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, right? Like people who go, oh my God, if you don't make half a million dollars a year, you're poor. Or, oh, if you don't make a quarter million dollars a year, you're, you know, if you make a quarter million dollars a year, you're poor. I'm just going to be honest from my perspective, right? I'm just going to be honest at $25,000 a month. If I don't have any major problems, I'm not like a, like a, you know, a, some people, they spend money egotistically, right? They want to look rich. They don't want to feel rich. They want to look rich, right? I mean, we got to be honest. We can't be naive and ignorant forever, right? We got to just be honest that some people on the planet, they just do not uh, have the right. They, they just do not have a good mindset, right? I'm not going to say right because who is to say who is right and wrong? But I mean, if you're egotistically spending money in terms of a universal perspective, like if you were to go and ask 100 people, is it a good idea for me to spend money so that I look cool, right? Is it a good money or is it a good idea for me to go and spend money so that, you know, uh, so that I look rich, right? I'm not, you know, I may not have any money, but I look rich. Is that a good idea? Most people would say that that is a bad idea, right? Most people would. And so granted that you don't have any major issues like that, you're not um you're not anything like that, you know, you're not spending money to look good or whatever or not not to look good, but you're not you're not you're not spending money purposefully just to look rich, right? If you're not doing anything like that and you're not uh you don't have any major problems like you're not addicted to drugs and you're not drinking alcohol all the time or whatever, $25, $40,000 a month is unlimited money. I'm just going to be honest, okay? from what I from how I see it if I make 25 to 40 thousand dollars a month and my idea is that when I wake up seven days a week the only thing I'm gonna do is run cattle until I'm 150 years old and I'm gonna work 110 hours a week if that is my life plan if that is what I want to do with myself in all honesty if that is what I want to do with myself right then 25 to 40 thousand dollars a month is more than enough money to do that I can do that 
for the rest of my life if I feel like it. And not only can I do that, but if I do that, the world will benefit from my success. Right? Because if, if I don't produce the beef, the beef is not just magically going to fall out the sky, right? The food is not magically just going to produce itself. And so at twenty five to forty thousand dollars a month, you know, when I look at my financials and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm bringing in twenty five to forty thousand dollars a month. And this is my life plan. You know, uh, here pretty soon, I'll probably buy myself more land. And, you know, I get myself to making uh, whatever a year, you know, uh, if I'm already making twenty five, forty thousand dollars a month, you know, if I get myself to making like two million dollars a year. I have unlimited money, right? Like you don't need a set amount of money to be rich. This is what I've been trying to tell people for the longest time. You don't need $10 million to be rich, right? You don't need $5 million to be rich. If you've developed yourself into a person who is capable of making $25,000, dollars $50,000 a month, from that moment, you are rich. This is what I've, you know, I've been telling people this for months now, right? You know, this is my perspective and this is what I, you know, this is just the perspective that I, I, I would honestly, sincerely like to give to the world. If you have developed yourself into a person who is, who is capable, you know, you, you have the character that is required and you also have the skill set that is required and you have the work ethic and all of that, right? The moment you are capable of making twenty five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month or anything or any sum of money, like if you, let's say you live on $3,000 a month, right? You live on $3,000 a month. For that $3,000 a month, you have a quarter million dollar mortgage and you have a uh, F-150 and you pay for all your bills, right? And you pay for everything, right? If you may, if you live on $35,000 a year, but you make $400,000, you are rich. You know, this is what I've been trying to tell people. If you, if you, uh, if you like make 14 times more money than you spend on, on a daily basis or on, an, on a monthly basis or whatever it may be, if you make 14 times more money than, than you spend, you are rich, right? Because and it's, and it's when it comes to money, okay, so for me as a person who makes, who makes this sum of money, if I look at somebody, right, and if I look at them and I say, oh, this person genuinely got to making about a quarter million, half a million dollars a year, they are making a quarter million to a half a million dollars a year, and they have not kicked themselves in the dick, right? They've gotten to this point and they still have not kicked themselves in the dick. That is very impressive. I would see that as a very good sign of their character. Because a lot of people, it does not matter how much money you give them. You could give them a thousand dollars and they will ruin their lives. They will go drink every weekend. They will go and buy themselves a nicer car. I mean, genuinely, it does not matter how much money, right? You can legitimately give somebody a thousand dollars a month and they will ruin their lives with it. They will turn into a worse person. Their character will get worse. You know, they'll, they'll start going, oh, you know, this is the idea also of why I do not help people. It's because, it, you know, and this is what I mean by, you know, when I stand out here every day, I'm giving the best free help that I can. Because if, if I can teach someone how to fish, I can teach someone how to fish, they will have fish forever, right? There's the old saying, if you teach someone how to fish, they will have fish forever. But in reality, in reality, if you start giving people fish, this is the reality of the situation because we need to understand that in the world, people can be not good, right? There, there are people who are genuinely not good, right? They, uh, they are just genuinely not good. Oh, why is this guy making it? Why am I not making it? Oh, he should have to help me for free. There are people who think these things, right? Oh, he should have to give away the stuff that he's doing. It doesn't matter that he worked 15 hours a day for 15 years. Of that. All that stuff, none of that stuff matters, right? He just should have to give this stuff away for free, right? Or th that that is genuinely, th there is that aspect of the world and we need to recognize that, right? And the thing about giving people fish is that if you give people fish, what will happen to a lot of people is that they will start believing that they deserve the fish for free. That is what their mindset will become. They, they will, their character will become worse, over a period of time, over a long course of time, they will, they will develop into a worse person. And so that's what I mean by having the character. You need to have good character. And if I genuinely met somebody, like, like I would think that if somebody met me and they realized, oh my God, like this guy is actually making twenty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month and he still has not kicked himself in the dick, right? He has still not ruined himself. I would see that as a very good thing, right? That would be a very positive thing.
genuinely that would be a very positive thing right it and that's you know um but that's what i mean by having good character and everybody's gonna see everything no matter what like if i met somebody and they were you know making eighty thousand dollars a year paying you know a 20 percent of their money in income tax and then spending the rest of it i would be very concerned right like, what are you possibly doing that would cost you $60,000 a year and you're not making any money on that sixty grand, right? Like, I would be very concerned. Like, if you are genuinely spending $60,000 a year and you're not making any sort of return on that sixty grand, I would be very concerned. I would not want to be business partners with you or anything else, right? I, wouldn't, I would not really even want to be your friend. And so that's what I mean by having the character, right? Because me, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's like people look at me. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, he spent like $40,000 a month. He lives on $40,000 a month, but he genuinely is bringing home like twenty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month, right? Growing 5,000 pounds of beef per acre a year. That would be very good. It does not matter. The, the, amount, the, the amount of money does not matter, right? Then this is what I mean by successful, you know, success it's like if you're successful and I'm successful, we're both successful. And it does not take a, a, a defined amount of money to define success. People will recognize success, right? It does not matter. You do not need $10 million, right? There there are a lot of ways to be successful. And me, it's like, you know, if, if, if from a person who is genuinely making twenty five dollars to $40,000 a month, I can honestly say that that kind of money is, is unlimited money unlimited money if my plan in life is to run cattle 365 days a year for the next 150 years of my life and for 100 hours a week that's all i want to do i'm just going to spend 24 hours a day farming for the rest of my life that's my idea right that's what i've been saying since years like you know that's what i've been saying every single day for months now right for over a year now that that's what i've been saying that if that is my plan for my life if i make 25 40 thousand dollars a month doing it then I can, then that is unlimited. I can legitimately just go and live my dream, right? I can go and run cattle until the end of my time, right? I can, if that's what I want to do at this, with this kind of money, I have unlimited money. That is what I mean by ha I have unlimited money. I can do whatever I want. And if what I want to do is run cattle 24 hours a day for the rest of my life until infinity and beyond, then I can do that. But you know, that's what I mean by 25, 40, you know, you don't need a set amount of money to be rich. Here over, you know, I'll probably do something about $25,000 a month on my farm. Twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 a month, not on my farm. Maybe my cattle will bring in me home, uh, you know, because I also got to, you know, uh, the, you know, because the thing about money, it's like, oh, well, I've got equity being stored in, in the, uh, I've, I have equity being stored in, in the, uh, in the, in, in my property, in my land. I have equity being stored in my property every single time I make a monthly payment. I have equity being stored in my property. I have property tax benefits. I have income tax benefits. I have sales tax benefits. And so if I include all of that stuff, right? If I include all of that stuff and combine it into one big, uh, big pile of money for just my overall financials, I would say I'm probably doing something about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month on this farm, Lucy. Leave them alone. Come here. I'm probably doing about twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a month on my ten acre farm. And so, you know, maybe, uh, well, maybe it's not going to be, uh, well, it's going to be about twenty thousand. I'm probably going to end up overall doing about twenty, uh, but I don't know. Okay, so here's the thing about me, right? Is that usually I end up doing better than what I anticipate. That that's one thing that I've realized about me is that, well, okay, but here's the thing. Also, thing about me. Is that when I make plans, I do not make plans for La La Land, right? I'm not sitting here going, oh man, if the cattle market goes up another 15% over the next four months, right? I'm not sitting here doing stuff like that. Oh man, you know, I bought, I bought corn at the bottom of the market. I'm not doing stuff like that, right? I make my plans for the worst case scenario. Not worst case scenario, but if I just do not do very... Because I also... Okay, here's my idea of worst case scenarios, right? Lucy, leave them alone. The thing about worst case scenarios is that the possibility of a worst case scenario happening is about the same as the best case scenario happening. Lucy, come here. And so when I when I make plans, I make my plans according to what if things just do not kind just kind of do not go very well. 
That is what I make my plans for. If things just do not go very well, right? I, I give a generous deduction to my animals, right? Oh, you know, if the if the feeder cattle market is sitting at 250 and that's the price of a number one eight weight steer, and I give a 10% discount and I'm looking to pay half of that, right? I mean, you know, I, I make my plans for uh for if things do not go very well. I, that, that's why I also have, you know, feed stores. You know, I, I have a, a barn full of hay and I have hay sitting out in my front yard and I have a sh half a shipping container full of corn. That's why I do these things, right? Because if things do not go very well, I am still prepared. And so, you know, but m most of the time I end up doing better than what I anticipate. And so if I think that I'm going to make 20,000, I'll probably end up doing a little bit better, like 23. I'm just going to be honest, right? That that is probably how things are going to turn out. From what I have seen, the worst case scenario, the chance of a worst case scenario is happening is about the same as the best case scenario happening. And most of the time, if I just plan for, to do a little bit worse to just not do very well, just to do a little bit less, uh, to just do a little bit worse than I think could possibly happen, I usually end up doing a little bit better than what I plan for. And so uh, that's just that's just how I go about things and that's that okay so that is also one thing that I believe is very uh that I do that that is very uh, beneficial for other people. Uh, you know like when you're making plans it is good to plan for things kind of just not going very good, right? You know, if you make plans for th every everything's gonna go into la la land mode. Oh, you know, uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, I fell out of heaven at seven, and I don't need to put in 15 hours a day for the next 15 years of my life. I'm just gonna show up, and this is gonna be la la land for me, and this is gonna be magic adventure time. You know, if that's your plan, that's not good, right? The, you know, uh, and that's one thing that I do that I I believe will uh, be of 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 big benefit to others. And, you know, yesterday, uh, you know, it was raining yesterday while, I, you know, and uh, I was reading, I was reading on the internet and I actually found this, uh, found this publication from the uh, Iowa something beef, something extension or something like that. And uh, they, they, they uh, found in their experiment that 93 to 94% of all of the, uh, the profitability estimates for cattle if they were going to run cattle in a feed pen, 93 to 94% of, of the possibility, you know, they could they could uh, calculate with 93 to 94% pro uh, pos uh, probability. They could calculate with 93 to 94% probability the chance of pros uh, of pro of uh, profitability. They could calculate with 93 to 94% uh, accuracy the uh, the the percentage of profitability in their operation if they just accounted for certain variables and the variables were the price of the cattle that they bring in what are they paying for the animal what do they estimate the price of the animal will be in the end the price of the corn the interest rates they are paying on their loans and the uh and the uh the amount that they are paying for the uh the land that the animal is occupying and i will i will put this um i will put this um uh, publication in the uh in the summary of my video and but this is what i mean by uh like me when it when y'all look at what i'm doing right and it's like oh man he's actually like 93 percent right he's 93 percent correct about what he needs to do right he's 93 percent correct but this is what i mean it's not just me it's a lot of people when you start getting to the to the to the upper 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 you know uh you know uh like people who are running one billion, five billion dollar businesses, we're all just about doing the same thing. More or less, we are all doing the same thing. It's not just me. And it's like when people look at me and they go, oh man, he's like 93, 94% accurate, right? It's not just me. It's, it's you know, the, the people with the five billion dollar businesses and the people with the 10 billion dollar, you know, businesses, the, uh, the, the, the 50 billion dollar industry more or less, we are all doing the same thing, right? I've said this repeatedly in the past. You know, the, the people, you know, you know, it's not just me. I'm not some one in 10,000 chance for, for intelligence, right? I'm not some one in 100,000 chance for intelligence. 99% of what I do is, is, is stuff that I read on the internet for free. And it made sense to me. And so I implemented it into my life. 
oh, if an animal, you know, uh, you know, here are some beef breeds, and if an animal is a beef breed, it's a number one to one and a half type. If the animal's got long legs, it's a medium large frame animal. I mean, whatever it may be, I did not just come up with this stuff on my own. And it's not just me. I've said this repeatedly, right? It's not just me. The, if you find somebody who is running like a $5 billion business, they are more or less going to be the, doing the exact same thing as me. More or less. Within two percentage, right? And, you know, I found a paper and I was reading it and I was like, oh, yeah, th th you know, like this is what makes sense to me, right? Because this is ultimately just about what I'm doing as well. With 93 to 94% accuracy, they could predict the profitability of their cattle by only looking at five variables. And this is what I mean by the pieces do not change. If you just learn how to look at the pieces and move the pieces accordingly, you will, you know, that is the entire game. The life is like a chessboard. If you just understand how your pieces move, right? If you just understand your pieces move in this way and the pieces do not change. That is the entire game. Everything. That, that you, you only move those pieces around the whole time. You don't have to do anything else. But I found a paper yesterday. I was just reading and I came across a paper yesterday and I was like, you know what? This is exactly what I've been talking about for the last like, I don't know how long. Every single day for like the last how long. If you just keep, oh, and, and another variable was the, uh, the, uh, the feed conversion. How much feed are they having to eat to put on one pound? And, you know, that's why I said, you know, like me, when I first started, when I had these animals on a total mixed ration, I would walk up to my animals and measure them, right? I would measure them with a tape measure every week to see how much weight they were putting on every week. That is why I did that. And everybody's doing this. It's not just me. The people with the $5 billion businesses are doing this. And everybody is more or less doing the exact same thing. If you know the price, if you have a good idea, a grasp of what you need to pay to bring in an animal. If you have a good idea of what you could get for that animal when you sell it. A rough estimate idea of what you can get for that animal when you sell it. If you know how much the price of your corn is. This is, you know, corn, I've said corn is like the baseline for feed, right? Corn is like the baseline for feed. The price of corn is essentially the price of cattle feed across the broader market, right? I've said this repeatedly in the past. But I'll post that I'll post that uh that uh that paper that I was reading yesterday in the summary of my video. If you have a, a rough idea of the cost of the animal that you're bringing in, the amount of money you will get for that animal when you sell it, the price of your corn, the interest rate on your loan, the cost of what it is, it, the amount of that it, that it is costing you to, you know, to have the land that you are, uh, you know, have the animal on. And how much feed does the animal need to eat to put on one pound of weight? If you just maintain those variables forever into infinity and beyond and you just keep an eye on those variables. And those are the only variables you keep your eyes on for the rest of your life into infinity and beyond. With 93 to 94% accuracy... You can predict your profitability. And, you know, this is what I've been trying to, you know, but I, when I found that paper yesterday, I was like, oh, my God, you know, because this is what I've been saying, like, for, for months, right? Everybody's doing the exact same thing. If you find somebody with a $5 billion business, they're probably going to be doing the exact same thing, more or less, within 2% of me. And so, you know... Uh, and it's like, you know, and it's like when people look at me, you know, I mean, you know, if you're going to be objectively honest, it's like when people look at me, they're like, oh, yeah, he's like he's like 93, 94 percent correct. Right. Ninety three to ninety four percent correct. The other five to six percent, it ultimately does. You know, it's just kind of negligible. Right. Oh, you know, there was some one in two decade type drop. Well, well, how can you how can you possibly predict that? Right. You can't really do stuff like that. And so how do I, you know, um, you know, you know, how do I implement the business plan that would uh, essentially save myself even in a in an unpredictable situation? Right. Well, I buy into the market every two weeks for the rest of eternity. I buy into the market every two weeks because if I buy into the market every two weeks and the market is steadily going down, 
I may get less for my animals, but the animals that I bring in cost me less as well. If I get more for my animals, then I also pay more for my animals. This is why I say, according to the feeder cattle price on the stock market, I generate a formula for how much I am going to pay per animal. And so, you know, it's like, this is why, you know, also why I say I try and be, I look to be as objective as possible. I don't do any of this, I fell out of heaven of seven stuff, right? I'm not going to sit here and talk about my opinions or my feelings. This is why I look to be as objective as I can. And I look to pass on good information because objective, objectivity is going to be true across the greater, you know, the greater plane of existence. If you can just keep your eyes on certain on certain variables and understand that those variables only move in certain ways and you only utilize those variables, you can legitimately predict the outcome with 93 to 94% success. And, you know, that's why, you know, like me, when I speak, oftentimes, you know, it's like I look and, it, and when y'all watch me, it's like, oh, man, like he's been, you know, 93 to 94 uh, percent uh, spot on. Right. 93 to 94 percent. Correct. Right. But it's not just me. It's the greater it, it's it's, you know, if you find somebody with a 10 billion dollar business, more or less within 2 percent, they are going to be doing the exact same thing as me. But I'll post that. I'll post that paper. I was reading it yesterday, and I was like, "Oh man, like, oh, like, uh," because I mean, every once in a while, I'll read something. And I'll be like, "Man, like, you know, like, like, uh," I'm glad that this person wrote this paper, right? Because, man, it's like, you know, uh, I, I would, I would like to, you know, uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, when I read stuff like that, I'm like, like, well, how, how incredible is that, right? And maybe I can pass that feeling on to others because when others see, watch my videos and they realize that I'm being objectively as, as objectively honest as I can, that, that I will spread that, that, that feeling to other people. It's like, oh man, like this guy is like 90, he's like, oh man, like 93 to 94% correct, right? Wow, that is incredible. Man, that is, that, that is enlightening. That, that's the best way to put it. It is enlightening. It's like, oh man, you know, I've said this repeatedly, but it's like, you know, the guy who's running the five billion dollar business or the person who's running the five billion dollar business within two percent is doing the same thing as me right everybody's doing the exact same thing they're just doing it in different aspects of the market i've said this repeatedly right i bring in assets i i increase the value of the assets and i use the i, the, I utilize the assets as a tax deduction I store my wealth into my assets, the equity of my assets, and then I appreciate my assets and my assets, uh, you know, give me tax-free money, right? Everybody's doing this. Practically everybody. It does not matter. You do not, you do not have to be a farmer. You could be in any aspect of the market and still be doing the exact same thing. You know, and, but... You know, it's not just me. Other people have come across this. Many, 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 tens of thousands of people have come across this idea as well. That if I just, if I just, if I just look at, you know, a handful of variables, if I look at my life like a chessboard, if I just keep my eyes on a set number of variables with 93 to 94% probability, I can predict the outcome. You know, you know, but that that is the honest that that is just you know I'll post that I'll post that paper and y'all can go and read it yourself. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.